Hello, I'm Tim Smith with the Adams County Historical Society, and today we celebrate the 200th anniversary or the bicentennial of the birth of General Winfield Scott Hancock. Hancock the Supreme, as he was nicknamed by George Brinton McClellan, was born in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania on February 14, 1824. Perhaps foreshadowing his later achievements, he was named in honor of Winfield Scott, a well-known general at the time and a hero of the War of 1812. Hancock was a graduate of the West Point class of 1844 and a veteran of the war with Mexico. He rose rapidly through the ranks of the Union Army during the early stages of the American Civil War, and following the Battle of Chancellorsville, he assumed command of the Second Army Corps of the Army of the Potomac. On the afternoon of July 1st, 1863, General Hancock was directed by General George Gordon Meade to make an assessment of the overall situation. He arrived in time to see the Union Army driven through the town and back onto the hills south of it. Along with General Oliver Otis Howard, he rallied the troops and helped to create a very strong defensive position along the slopes of Cemetery Hill. His confidence in this position would influence the decision of General Meade to order the entire Army of the Potomac to Gettysburg. On July 2nd, he supervised the Union defense along Cemetery Ridge. At critical moments in the battle, he shifted troops to East Cemetery Hill and Culp's Hill. He directed Caldwell's division into the wheat field and then shifted Willard's brigade in an effort to halt the Southern advance against General Sickles' overextended Third Army Corps. It was here that he personally ordered the 1st Minnesota in a suicidal charge in a desperate effort to buy more time. During the bloodiest day of fighting at Gettysburg, his masterful defense of Cemetery Ridge is a topic of study by historians of the battle to this day. On July 3rd, it was Hancock's men that would feel the brunt of Longstreet's assault, today known as Pickett's Charge. During the bombardment preceding the attack, he was seen to ride calmly behind the Union lines, providing encouragement and giving confidence to his men. During the height of the charge, he was painfully wounded in the groin. While in the process of ordering standards Vermonters to move forward and flank Pickett's men with a raking fire. He eventually recovered and returned to service, but would suffer from the effects of this wound for the rest of his life. This monument at the site of Hancock's wounding was placed in 1888. The general also played a role in national politics. In 1880, Hancock was a Democratic candidate for president against Civil War veteran James Garfield of Ohio. The election was very close, but in the end, he fell short. The popular vote totals for the two main candidates were separated by just 1,898 votes, the smallest victory in the national popular vote for president ever recorded. Of course, there was a wider margin in the Electoral College. Hancock failed to carry his home state of Pennsylvania. He remained in the Army for the rest of his life, serving in a variety of military posts and positions. His last public duty was his oversight of the funeral of Ulysses S. Grant in 1885, where he helped lead the nine-mile procession of Grant's body through New York City. General Winfield Scott Hancock died in New York on February 9, 1886. Rarely noticed by visitors, Hancock is also memorialized on the southern side of the Pennsylvania Monument on Cemetery Ridge. General Hancock took a great interest in the preservation and memorialization of the Gettysburg Battlefield. 
On November 19th, 1885, local photographers recorded views of Hancock and his party at the site of his wounding and the soon to be memorialized clump of trees along Cemetery Ridge. On June 5th, 1896, an equestrian monument was dedicated to the memory of General Hancock on Cemetery Hill at the site where he helped rally Union troops on the evening of July 1st, 1863. General Hancock always believed that this was his main contribution to the Union victory at Gettysburg. And that may be true. Personally, I would argue for his actions on the evening of July 2nd. In hindsight, the placement of the statue here is unfortunate. The National Park Service has no established parking on East Cemetery Hill, and the area is not interpreted as part of the auto tour map. So in turn, the monument is not seen by many visitors to the battlefield. One can only imagine how popular Hancock the Supreme would be today had his equestrian statue been placed at the angle on Cemetery Ridge where the Second Army Corps repulsed the most famous charge in American military history. Remember, if you're a fan of our YouTube site, please like and subscribe so you can always receive timely updates on our latest videos.